an interview in Android, best he answered. He is Raj, Raj is having 0 to 2 years of experience, as a programmer in Android. He is having a technical round, let's see how clearly he replies to questions. Interviewer started by asking. Explain the platform architecture of Android. Android is an open source, Linux based software stack. It comprises of Linux kernel, hardware abstraction layer, native libraries, Android runtime, Java APIs, system apps. Below of stack is the Linux kernel. Linux kernel provides drivers for connecting to hardware. The hardware abstraction layer, HAL, provides a standard interfaces that interact with kernel drivers to access hardware features. Android runtime is written to run multiple virtual machines on low memory devices by executing DEX files. For devices running Android version 5.0 or higher, each app runs in its own process and with its own instance of the Android runtime. Prior to Android version 5.0, Dalvik was the Android runtime. Native C or C++ libraries. Android components such as ART and HAL are built from native code that require native libraries written in C and C++. Android provides Java APIs to use functionality of native libraries to apps. Java API Framework Java APIs form the building blocks you need to create Android apps by providing components and services. System apps Android comes with a set of core apps for email, SMS messaging, calendars, internet browsing, contacts, and more. Good. Very well explained. Can you explain activity life cycle? Yes, sure. An activity has essentially four states. If an activity is in the foreground of the screen, it is active or running. If an activity has lost focus, but is still visible, like in case of dialog comes top, then it is paused. If an activity is completely obscured by another activity, it is stopped. It still retains all state and member information. If an activity is paused or stopped, the system can drop the activity from memory by either asking it to finish, or simply killing its process. So, when the activity is first created, its onCreate method gets called. OnStart get called after onCreate when the activity is becoming visible to the user. After it on resume, is being called, when the activity will start interacting with the user. On pause, is called, when the system is about to start resuming another activity, or when it loses focus, like when some dialog comes top of it. On stop, called, when the activity is no longer visible to the user, because another activity has been resumed and is covering this one. On restart, is called if this activity is coming back to interact. If the activity is finished, the final call activity will receive is on stroy. That completes whole activity cycle. That's excellent. Let's say there are three activities. A, B, C each having button to start activity, 
without finishing, in order. A starts B. B starts C. C starts A. Can you show me, what all set of life cycle method gets called, while navigation from A to B, B to C, C to A? Okay. When activity A started, it's on create, on start, on resume, gets called in order. When activity B started, A, on pause, gets called, then B, on create, on start, on resume, gets called in order. When activity C started, B, on pause, gets called then C, on create, on start, on resume, gets called in order, then B, on stop. When again activity A started from C, as A was not destroyed, so first C, on pause, gets called, then A, on restart, on start, on resume, gets called in order then C, on stop. That's excellent. What is service in Android, and what are their types? A service is an application component, that can perform long-running operations, in the background, and it does not provide a user interface. These are the three different types of services, scheduled, started, bound. A service is scheduled, when an API such as the job scheduler, launches the service. A service is started, when an application component, such as an activity, calls start service. After service started, it can run in the background indefinitely, even if the component that started it is destroyed. It is stopped by stop service method. The service can stop itself by calling the stop self method. A service is bound, when an application component, binds to it by calling bind service. A bound service offers a, client server interface, that allows components to interact with the service, send requests, receive result. The client can unbind the service, by calling the unbind service method. The service cannot be stopped, until all clients unbind the service. Good nicely explained. Can you explain by any real-time example, when to use bind service or start service? Yes sure. Suppose, I want to play music in the background, so call start service method but I want to get information of the current song being played. I will bind the service that provides information about the current song. Very good example. Okay tell me, what is the difference between service and intent service? Service is the base class for all services. Once the service is started, the onStart command, method in the service is called. It passes in the intent object from the start service call. If start service is called while the service is running, each time its onStart command, is also called. Therefore it's important to create a new thread each time, in onStart command in which the service can complete all of its work, for that particular intent received. While intent service is a subclass of service, creates a work queue, that passes one intent at a time, to your onHandle intent method implementation, so you never have to worry about multi-threading. Very nice. Now tell me, what is an intent in Android? An intent is a messaging object, used to request an action, to performed by application component, such as Activity, Service, Broadcast Receiver etc. Very nice. 
And what's the difference between implicit intent and explicit intent? Explicit intents specify the component to start by its name, that is, fully qualified class name. For example, you can start any new activity by its name, or start a service by its name, to download a file in the background. Implicit intents do not directly specify the Android components which should be called, it only specifies action to be performed, which also allows a component from another app to handle it. Very nice. What is Broadcast Receiver in Android? Broadcast receivers are components in the application that listen for broadcasts and take some action. For example, building a broadcast receiver to listen for the battery getting low broadcast event in order to inform the user that unsaved data should be saved quickly. Good. And how many ways app can send broadcast? Android provides three ways for apps to send broadcast. First is through send ordered broadcast method, second is through send broadcast method, third is through local broadcast manager method send broadcast. The send ordered broadcast method sends broadcasts to one receiver at a time. As each receiver executes in turn, it can propagate a result to the next receiver, or it can completely abort the broadcast, so that it won't be passed to other receivers. The send broadcast method, sends broadcasts to all receivers in an undefined order. The local broadcast manager method send broadcast, sends broadcasts to receivers that are in the same app as the sender. If you don't need to send broadcasts across apps, use local broadcasts. Good. You have very well answered to all your question. Raj excellently replied the question that was being put by interviewer. <laughs>